All right, everybody, I said it yesterday, beware the gravestone doji. Okay, there it is. You know, two days prior to that, I said that this was almost an evening star, and then we got that big green day, which invalidated that. But here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The range today was 33. So not a huge range day, but pretty much the entire day was red. Or I should say the candlestick. Traded up uh, 8 a.m. 9 a.m. was a big I looking at the I was looking at the hourly, hourly chart. I saw a big red candlestick at 9 a.m. I knew right then and there something was up. Stick around, by the way, for the end of this video. I'll show you my profit loss for the day. Did I make money? Did I lose money? Hmm, hum, hum, hum. And I want to talk about quickly uh, cover uh, the wheat futures because uh, if you didn't watch my video from late last night, I put out a video about a breakout that I think is going to happen in wheat. We'll talk about that briefly as well. So let's look at this. This is the E-mini S&P 500 futures, the December contracts. I normally trade the MES futures. So those that want the E-micro, that'd be the E-micro. The ES is the E-mini. Now I put it in this new cycle yesterday that runs from uh, November, let's see, what is that? November 13-ish, yep, all the way over, I'm sorry, October 13-ish, 13, 13 all the way over to about uh, November 16th, okay? So that cycle, I'm talking about this cycle right here, okay? And not 100% sure where the cycle is going to end, we're just... Pretty sure this is the, the anchor for the beginning. Not too sure about the end. Like I said yesterday, we're just going to go with the VIX expiration, which is the third Tuesday of November. And we'll adjust this if necessary. So until further notice, this yellow line here would be the middle of the cycle, okay, which is about uh, October 29th or October 30th. Okay, 4590 was the high. And now we're seeing price action come down. Look at the stochastic momentum index. Give me one second here. Get the pencil back. Look at that bad boy. Rolling over nicely now, guys. Starting to roll over very nicely. Look at that. Big Daddy's been talking to us for about two or three days. And look at this fix, guys. Now this is something to pay attention to. Look at that fix. I talked about yesterday how it's just sticking around in the 15s. Not anymore. An entire point jump oh yeah here comes that volatility okay so this feels like a, the middle of a cycle price lull or even a price decline that's exactly what it feels like as we approach the middle of this cycle if indeed we if indeed i got this cycle right the middle of the cycle is kind of like in this area here the top of the arc then we might just see prices kind of go sideways maybe they, they'll come down we'll see what happens here but today was Definitely a follow-up to that that doji right there yesterday, yeah? Yep. For sure, follow-up to that. Gravestone doji. You know why they call it gravestone, right? Because obviously it looks like a gravestone. Okay, right? That's the base. And that's the stone itself. Usually there's some person's name on there. Okay. And why they call it gravestone? Because, first of all, it looks like a gravestone. And second... You know, it implies, <laughs> you know, it implies downward, right? Implying the end of something or death, you know, downward, right? Going down, deathly, if you will. Prices are, are going down. So that's the, a little bit of the history why it's called a gravestone doji, okay? Doesn't always mean we're going to reversal, but in this kind of market, with this kind of seriously elevated pricing, yeah. I talked about how we had a, a decrease in volume. And we had this volume spike right here three days ago. I talked about this. You know, and I said, hey, that was some strong hands, maybe some hedge funds, taking some profits. Okay? And a couple, a few days before that, we, of course, we had the big daddy talking to us a little bit right there, but it wasn't very strong. Okay, well, here we are three days later. And it looking like we got some confirmation. Wow. 
We still got this gap going on in the MACD. Okay, but the MACD is always going to respond late. But yeah, there's still a huge gap here. So, you know, I still feel like I need to tread with a little bit of caution. Right? You could you could drive several Mack trucks down down through this down through this road here. I said yesterday you could, you could put a freighter ship through there in the in the Panama, the Suez Canal, right? At the size of that thing. So still a little bit of caution, definitely. You can't just take one day and say, woohoo, we're going down. But but I do think there's more downward action sideways to downward action. That's what I think is going on. That, that's where I think we're heading at least for going into November 1st. Okay? So this is one of those situations where we're not anywhere near options express, uh, expiration. This is just a middle of a cycle lull. Or sometimes you'll see these cycles split up into this is like a 29 um this is like 29 days. Let me see if I get this thing to play nice. Yeah, 25 25 bars. Anywhere from 25 to 29 bars. But right now we're going with 25 bars, 25 trading days. So, you know. I do think we're going to get some more price down downward action or a stalling in price coming into November 1st. Okay. Now let me let me show you something we're going to we're going to switch over to wheat real quick. I'm just going to cover that real quick and then I'll show you my profit loss for the day. So hold tight for that. All right, here we go, guys. This was, you can see, last night actually at about 10, 17 my time here in the great state of Texas. I had a um, 10 contract position going on. And price, I noticed, was kind of came down and then started retracing a little bit. And we can be one of those commodities. You really got to pay attention to it because it can do. I talked about this, I think, yesterday, uh, last night or yesterday when I talked about, you know, you got to be careful with wheat because it could do a head fake. So I have my stop loss in there, guys. Risk management, guys. Risk management. Stop loss in there. Um, trailing stop, stop loss. And there you go. 475 for the day. Nice, nice little profit on some downward price action. Okay. Now, um, I don't have all the, the, the triangles all set up here like I did. Look in the description. I'll put it in this, this video, the description below this video. I'll put a link to the Wheat Futures breakout, guys. Looks like there's going to be a breakout in wheat coming up. Okay, Not sure exactly when, but I do believe that's going to be happening soon. Could be right away. Could be about, you know, maybe... Uh, second week of November as we get into a potential low, okay? As you can see here, it looks like there's still some downward price action, okay? But this thing could turn on a, can turn on a, on a hot second, all right? But normally speaking, we'd, we'd see more downward price action. Now today, this is a screenshot, by the way. This is not in the day, Okay. So just wanted to show my profit loss on the wheat. Okay, let me switch over to the end of day, okay, for this. And we'll talk about this just a little bit more. Okay, so here we are on the end of day. Now, wheat trades at uh, different hours than most commodities, okay? I'll leave it up to you. You can go to the CME site and just look up CME, okay? You can either put slash ZW or just put ZW without the slash, or you could put CME wheat in your favorite search engine and you can look up the specs or the, uh, I think it'll be under, yeah, under specs should show you the hours of what it trades. It definitely trades some some interesting hours. It starts trading at like seven o'clock at night and trades all the way to like seven o'clock in the morning kinda and then reopens up and trades until about 1.30 in the afternoon. So you can see from the time that last night, now look at this end of day. Oh, it rebounded huge. It went from a red candlestick down here, guys. Okay, and rebounded all the way back up to 760. Okay, so it came down like this and turned right around, went all the way back up. And that's why I see time and time and time and time again, guys. You've got to understand that trading is not the lotto. It's not gambling. You've got to have your risk management in place. Okay, that's how I locked in my profits. Okay. I talk about it all the time in this channel. Lock in your profits. Use your trailing stops and use your stop losses to, you know, 
to, to cut the losses short or trailing stops and locking the profits, okay? All right, so I don't want to go through the same thing I did in, in the video from last night, so watch the video for all the details, but just real quick here, you can see, let me, let me zoom out just a little bit here. Look at this massive ascending triangle. Look at this thing. All the way back from like May 3rd. Look at that. Flat top right across the top. For like the last, what? Over, um, coming up on five, it's coming up on six months. Okay, and you can see the, the, uh, the higher lows. Just keep knocking out higher lows. Okay, well here we are, getting into this very tight, very, very tight ascending triangle. Okay, and we have it with descending volume, guys. If you look at the volume, it keeps coming down. That is a classic example of an ascending triangle, regardless of whether you come into this a triangle from, from above or from below, they usually break out to the upside, okay? But this one came in from above. So we've got so many factors pointing towards a breakout. Usually ascending triangles will break back, or triangles in general will break back out where they came from. Well, they came, it came from up, so it'll break towards upside. But particularly ascending triangles almost always break to the upside, especially on descending volume. That's historical data, just shows that, okay? So ignore the VIX. We don't pay attention to the VIX here when it comes to wheat. All right. But I caution that, you know, we have a low due. And I think this is, see if I get this to play nice. Yeah, November 10th. Okay, so that's that's a low due no, November 10th. So I'm, I'm really cautious about going long right now. Okay, because this, if this break, here's the thing. Here's my taking all this, okay. First of, first of all, 75% of the way through the triangle is usually where you'll see the breakout happen. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this distance right here. 75% of the way from there, you know, from there to there, 75% of the way it'd break out. That's like back here. So I would expect it to break out to happen already either coming up into there or even to that one, but it didn't happen yet. Okay. We're at like at 82% right now. All right. So here's, here's my whole take on this. I would wait to go long until it breaks above this line, and particularly if it gets above 774. That would give you an all-time new high. Well, not an all-time new high, but it'd give, you, it'd give you a high in recent times. So if it breaks out above that and gets above that 774, to me, that's, that's a good signal to go long. Okay? Meantime, even though today was a very strong rebound day, I'm still not convinced that it's, it's going to break out above this because it, well, because it hasn't, right? So I'm waiting to see, uh, historically, more times than not, wheat will trade down into November and then turn and go strong all the way into January. It might fart around between November and December, but generally it'll start trading strong all the way up into January. Okay? So... I would not be surprised to see this trade down into, into this November date, somewhere around second week of November, and then take off. Okay? So I'm not saying that's going to happen, but that's a scenario we see a lot. So I'm waiting to see what this does. Okay? So that's the, my take on wheat. Okay. Let me finish up with the profit loss. Well, let me go to the profit loss for the day, and then we'll finish up after that with my last comments on the S&P 500. All right, here you go, guys. This I was trading the, the uh, E Micro S and P 500. You can see this is upper left hand corner there at about 222. This is when we had the. Uh, this is the hourly chart, by the way. Look at the hourly chart. You can see one o'clock. Look at that candlestick. I was really tempted right there at the peak. It was right around that 776 number, 4576, and I knew because it had already had peaked over here at the nine o'clock and the big sell off at 9 a.m. And then we had the 476 come right back up. And I was like so close to going huge. But I, you know, uh, decided to go a little bit smaller. And I got in somewhere. I think it was somewhere right around there. I don't remember exactly. Took a short position right in there. And then bams go. I took advantage of this almost all the way down. And then stopped out somewhere down there. 
So there you go, guys and gals. $463.75. 463. Nice day. Happy camper. Nice profit. I've been very patient, man. Had to be very patient through a lot of these days. Okay, a lot of patience going on. Okay, so there it is, 463. Liking that. Good little profit today. Okay. Let's switch back over and finish up this video with my thoughts about tomorrow for the S&P 500. Okay, just real quick, finish up this video, guys. Yep, I, like I already said, I think we're going to either trade sideways or down into the into the middle of November. I think there's more short side potential than the other way around. I think that gravestone is, yep, giving us a pretty strong signal. And guys, I think I'm going to release part one to the secret cycle tonight. Hopefully I can release it, gather up my thoughts about part one. There's so many parts to that. I'm going to release it tonight. <laughs> You're going to want to watch it. It is just mind-boggling, make-your-head-spin stuff. It's an amazing, it's going to be an amazing series of videos. So be on the lookout for that. I'm going, to, I'm going to try to release part one tonight. I think it's going to shock a lot of people. Okay. Um, also, even though I didn't cover in this video, the small trading account, we're still holding those ARLP uh, shares. ARLP, guys. I still think that stock today traded down a little bit with the stock market. I'm not worried. Uh, I'm going to hold on to that thing through the dividend date, which is, uh, I think, November 4th. If I remember right, 20 cent dividend, guys. For those that don't know, 20 cent dividend coming up. You're, the ex dividend date is, I think, yeah, the ex dividend date is November 4th. And then they, I think they're going to pay on the 15th or something like that. Okay. So ARP is going to pay a 20 cent dividend, guys, for a stock, for a $12 stock. Nice little dividend. Okay. I think the stocks can go up to 15 to 20 bucks, somewhere in that area. Okay. Don't think it's going to happen all at once, but I think it's going to get there. So that's a small account on still holding those ARLP, ARLP shares. I think it's 94 shares if I remember right. Okay. So for those that are trading, the, follow me on the uh, small trading account. You know, even though you're not seeing the E-Trade screenshot here or anything, there's, just know I haven't sold those shares. I'm still holding on to ARLP. That's a swing trade. We're going to hold that puppy and make a little bit of dividends on it. Okay. All right, guys and gals, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Now is the time to do it. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to click that little bell to be notified of all the videos as they come out. Happy trading, everybody. Look for a video coming out tonight. We'll talk to you all real soon again next time.